turn to my ta dashboard there. So a lot of you guys have been following here today. So obviously do appreciate that. And if you haven't hit that follow button already, do make sure you do so. Keep up to date with when we're live with all of our StarCraft 2 content. We are live pretty much every single day with StarCraft 2. When we go offline today, we're not going to be live for until, basically until the uh, Korean qualify tomorrow. Because I've been live for a ridiculous amount of time last night. So, um, so yeah. It's, um, it's been fun. So, let's uh, jump into this. There's going to be the yellow Zerg. To the top right hand side is going to be Rogue. And to the bottom left, our red Terran player, Keen. So, I'm just going to be uh, setting up and looking to see what's going to happen. Have a little bit of a look to see what will be our opening here. It's actually a bit of an early pool, an early gas pool out of Rogue. So a little bit of an interesting start from him. As we uh, set up into this. And that will allow him to get into a little bit of a faster link speed. And some other bits and pieces as well. I mean, from Keen so far, just a root based expand factory follow up nice and quickly as well. So not going to be a 2 1 1 opening. Let me see this uh, Reaper. Just going to take this watchtower on the left hand side. And that's going to be sitting here and looking to see what's going on. So Reaper is going to sit on the left hand side of the uh, watchtower. Let me see, I mean. It's going to be kind of safe, right? I mean, it is a pool first, so he's actually right to kind of keep his Reaper close to home. If you send it across the map, there's a personal that these first two links kind of sneak around and look to see uh, what else is going on. So, first thing, we're going to be moving it over. We're moving around, see what else is happening. We see this barracks going to lift off the reactor. We're going to drop back down over here. You can see the starboard on the way up as well. So, starboard starting to build. We're going to see this command center finishing up on the low ground. And Keen is just going to be, uh, again, very standard build in the first game. Just a couple of Hellions. Interesting to not see 2 1 1, I guess, because that is the most standard build. And a lot of Terran players, I feel, usually do start up with something like that. But maybe Keen wants to do something wacky. I mean, maybe this is going to be nice and standard, just to basically Kelly an opening. Lots of possibilities here. Starport finishes, so Medivac is a possibility now as well for Hellion drop, a Liberator potentially. Medivac is the most common, and there it's going to be. Uh, Medivac on the way out. So Medivac coming up here, 4 Hellions going to be out in total, Pneumatized Carapace is continuing to build, going to finish in just a few moments time. You can see these two Hellions actually going to start running by and we're going to pick off a couple of Lings, actually still has these Hellions alive very very long despite the lack of health on one of them. You can see a grenade to help the Hellion and uh, Reaper getting away. And Keen a little bit of an interesting dive in there because he kind of loses uh, the opportunity to do a lot, I mean, now he's only on 3 Hellions, he looks for this drop very shortly. Overlord sees the drop coming in as well, so it's a really good amount of information here from Rogue. He knows exactly what's going on. Rogue's been in a weird place himself lately. I mean, when was the last time you really saw Rogue doing something great? It's been a while since we saw this guy really being impressive. In fact, didn't even go out in GSL in the same group as Keen? It feels as though that might be a... Uh, that e that's either a fact I'm making up or a fact that I'm very impressed I remembered somehow. Let's have a look as we see this Hellion job. Gonna get turned around almost instantly, so... Nothing really too crazy there. Links and Queens well positioned to shut this down. I mean, that's what happens when you see this coming from a mile away. You're able to get in position early, you're able to react, and you're able to get some good stuff done. Rogue, Rogue, Rogue. He did go out in a group with uh, Keen and uh, Keen inside of it. So he actually lost to Keen two games to one in GSL. Well, that was actually one of our first GSL groups this year. It was the first GSL group this year. C4 Hellions did find the way towards the third base. Uh, could have probably gone towards the mineral line a little bit faster, honestly. Gets three drones here nonetheless, and we'll still be lifting up and evacuating. Actually misses the Hellion, picks up a Reaper instead. But anyways, we're going to be seeing the... Uh, just going back over to the left-hand side. I'm just going to very quickly address this in the chat. Turn... like, someone's telling me in the chat that... My... that running ads is affecting my viewers. Like... You realize that if I didn't run ads, I literally would not make enough money to 
bring you guys this content today. I would literally not be here. I'd probably have somewhere else to be because this wouldn't be my full-time job. And so you probably wouldn't have an English stream for the IEM qualifiers. Like, I mean, you would. You'd have another English stream probably, but I wouldn't be here. So don't tell me that ad block is a reasonable thing to do and that it's common sense to ad block. Ad block is literally depriving, is literally everything that is wrong in the world nowadays. People think they're entitled to stuff for free. You know, the entire fucking industry revolves around commercialism and revolves around advertising things. Advertisement is a core feature and ad block literally destroys that. That's why ad blocking is very fucking stupid. And I can understand ad blocking when it's annoying and frustrating and really gets in the way. But does that happen on Twitch when you're literally sitting on a break with nothing happening on screen, ads just running instead? No. So I don't care. I mean, if you can come up with a, like, if you can, I, I just don't even know how you can not see that. It really blows my mind. It, it, like, it truly does. It really blows my mind that people can think like that. It's crazy. If that's really bother you that much, I mean, sure. If you really, if you really find it unbearable that some ads pop up and that you actually support someone putting their life into some content that you're, you know, that like you're consuming, if you find that really pisses you off, then don't add, you know, then go fucking use your ad block, go wild. But man, you must have no fucking morals. Like seriously, ad block. I, I, I shouldn't have started talking about ad block because it'll make me rant and rant and rant. It's one of those things I just can't get behind like at all anymore. Like. I, I, I ad block myself, but I whitelist like the majority of things because, you know, I only want to make sure I don't get spammed by random shit. Anyways, this isn't the time and place for the conversation. If you want to continue, let's uh, talk later. As we see some SCVs, gonna go down to a little bit of a Ling run by. A couple of Widowmines going off to help defend. There's a big drop into the main base. King gonna continue being aggressive here. Pushing on in. And then we're seeing this uh, Spawn and Pool gonna get taken down. Spawn and Pool getting taken down, gonna be. Uh, Getting uh, shut down completely, so actually that's going to be meaning no more Zergens being produced. Bane speed's on the way, but where are the Bane? It's coming up from the low ground. Are well, those Widowmines going to get blown up by those Banes? And we're seeing uh, Keen just continue to pull backwards. What can he make out of this? He's going to lift up a couple of these uh, Med Marines. And he's going to get away with a good chunk of it as well. So getting away with a good chunk of that now, and we're going to be seeing these few Koreans still just to the left-hand side of this base. And there's these Medivacs. Just, uh... Pulling away. So Medivac's pulling away right now. This CC actually took a lot of damage over towards the third base. That's kind of crazy. Third CC taking a lot of damage over here, in fact. So it's pretty interesting as we're going to be seeing the uh, Widowmine sat outside of the third right now. And a few Zergens are going to move around and look to see where else they can go. Marine's going to stim once again. A 36 more Zerglings on the way up and 2 2 as well. So I mean, overall, losing the pool didn't really affect uh, Rogue too badly. He uh, responded to this pretty nicely overall, I would say, as we're going to be seeing the uh, overall taking a little bit of damage. Nice scan coming down. A lot of this creep being cleaned up. And this be seeing some seconds running forwards. I mean, for now, King can kind of fight this. He's got four medivacs. He actually has a lot of healing available. Uh, he wasn't healing there for a moment or two, though, which is maybe what really uh, hurt him during that fight. Seven mutilers continue to come on in. We're going to be seeing the plus two, plus two, starting up from both players as well. A few uh, Marines coming around the left-hand side, coming down to the south, looking to see what's going on. And again, having a little bit of a look uh, to see what's uh, going to happen as he pushes forwards. Just going to scan. And look to see what else is uh, taking place. A couple of Marines going to pick off a couple more creep tumors. And again, Lings and Banes and Muse gathering on up to the right hand side. So just a few of these units gathering to the right. We see a little bit of a scan coming down over here. And again, some more SC uh, Crypt units getting picked off. Again, T2 upgrades. About to finish up for our Zerg player. Really nothing too exciting going on for a couple of moments. Like a little bit of a drop here. I guess Muters are starting to come on the map, so these drops aren't going to last too much longer out on the map. And we're going to be seeing again a few Widowmines just setting on up. Mirror to, uh, Marines here as well. And again, I guess looking to see what's going to happen next as we see the plus one vehicle weapons on the way from Keen. That's an interesting addition. The vehicle weapons, something we always see kind of 
invested into you. Mostly for like fours later in the game, also than anything else. But uh, yeah, I mean, mostly for like fours than anything else. I mean, widow mines don't really benefit from it. They actually benefit more from the vehicle playing. So it is interesting to go plus one vehicle weapons. We'll see how that comes into as it uh, continues. We see some links going over here, but main fight over here. Lean in Muta. Starting to crash on through. Widowmine's doing a good job, though. It's a big pre split from Keen. Honestly, this run by not going to do much at all. Bunker in position. Now Muta's actually going to come up to the top side, so. Coming up to the top and have a look to see where else he can go. And we're going to be seeing more of these Marines. So again, just splitting up and Bane's just crashing on forwards. And, uh. Again, looking to see what else is going on. We see this uh, hatchery going to take a little bit more damage. Links and Banes will continue to roll on forwards. And it's going to be seeing the uh, Banes connecting in once again. We see actually Muta's going to come in counter attack. And it's going to be quite a large counter attack. A little amount of damage being done. And it's going to be seeing the uh, SCVs continue to be uh, picked off. So it's kind of a bit of a weird one, actually, because Keen's doing a good job over here, but I actually think he's just going to get cleaned up eventually. Widowman goes right into the heart of the bio, and he is going to have to start retreating, but he's not going to be retreating with very much at all. Mostly just medevacs, which are intercepted by the Mutalists from the left-hand side. Oh, no way. Keen picks out the one medevac with units inside. Can't believe it. Mutalists, slings. Continue to move around here from Rogue, seeing what else is going on. Use those Marines and Widow Mines, looking to see what else is uh, happening right now. There's three weapons on the way up from Keen. Maybe seeing some more Zeglins. Just, uh. I mean, Rogue just took a good fight, right? He just took a really good position in this game. A really good position in this game. A few more Banes coming up to the top side. And we're going to be seeing the plus two flyer attack upgrade coming into the right hand side of the natural expansion. So, again, just setting up and seeing what else is going to happen. You see Marines continue to stim forwards, a few more creep doomers getting picked off. And Lings and Mew is going to continue flying on in as Widow Mine will probably be a uh, well, big part of this defense. I mean, Keen again is kind of holding on, but oh, 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 oh kind of holding on. But very few workers. I mean, look at that. A whole bunch of them going down. That third base on fire once again. How many times has that happened this game? Absolutely crazy as you're going to be seeing the uh, Lingers and Muters still looping around, seeing where they can go. I mean, Planet Fortress has a stronghold, so the fourth will be nice, but I mean, there's no turret here yet, so these Muters can run free on that fourth because Keen's well out of position, really kind of focusing down to the south side. Turret gets cancelled. And the Muta's just going to sit here working their way through the fourth base. Some Banes leading the charges. Widowmines on Burrow just yet. And the connection where it does come down is just going to be on a couple of Zerglings. As again, Key is just getting withered away here by Rogue. And as the game goes on and on and on. Another client before it's getting taken down. Zerglings is going to actually take down this base to this side. Suddenly Key is on just two base. And Rogue is going to have way too much. GG's. And Rogue is going to take game number one. That stuff like Adblock that will make streamers like me in the future probably not be able to stream as a full-time streamer, which, I mean, might not mean fucking shit to you guys. Might not mean shit at all, but... You know, maybe you have that one favorite guy who you like to watch stuff of. I mean, it's ads and stuff and content like that. It does go a long way to supporting people and to keeping stuff like this free, like keeping Twitch as it is, like... <sighs> I don't know. I think people really underestimate the ads. <sighs> God damn it. What have I, st what, what have I started? Like, Jesus Christ, I didn't mean to start this much of an argument. I just feel passionate about Adblock. I'm sorry that I let it show. I'll just try and be a faceless streamer who just talks about the game 24-7 instead. Why do I talk about controversial things? I really hate myself for talking about this. I really do. Anyways, let's kick this off. Gas pool and hatch. Let's see what's going to happen to the bottom right side. It's our yellow Zerg player. It's Rogue. And to the upper left, our blue turn player. Let's give it up for Keen. 
Thank you very much. Karen87, who's just hit his one year resub. Can you SMS Joe Hearts in the chat, please? Thank you very much for the 12 months. Do you appreciate it? So we're setting up, going to see a second refinery, going to be uh, setting up here right now. Factory going to be uh, finishing in just a few moments. and Again, just going to be seeing the uh, factory based opening. is interesting for me once again, I guess. It's, uh, it's different. I mean, to kind of go factory opening twice in a row is very interesting. Not seeing a 2 one, one twice in a row is actually kind of nice. A little bit of freedom here in the uh, TVZ as we're just going to be seeing the starboard on the way up in the main base. Nimitai's Carapaz is starting to build in the main from our Zerk player. So he's setting up into that right now. And we're well, going to be seeing these few Zergans coming down to the low ground. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, nothing really too crazy. Early just rogue opening safe, standard. An early gas pool just to make him a little bit, uh, a little bit interested as well. Yeah, it's interesting. And as you see, uh, whatever this was built on, this barracks is going to get cancelled here. And uh, just going to be seeing these SCVs and a couple of mules continue to mine away on the natural expansion. Supply Depot comes down. We're going to be seeing this overlord moving out onto the map. And there's going to be uh, seeing this overlord just coming through the center. Armory on the way up, so it's going to be a uh, hellbat based attack this time around. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy at all. Just going to be setting up a bit of a hellbat attack here. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, Liberator on the way up as well. So these units just going to start pushing in. A couple of Marines, hellbats, pushing forwards and just looking to see what else is going on. Couple more Zergans going down. This is kind of weird because I mean, there's not a Bane Nest ready. There's not that many Queens either. Like, what, three Queens? It's five, but he's going to have to bring the rest of them forwards as well. They're coming down from the natural expansion as we speak. So, on their way over here right now, and just going to be seeing the uh, Lings continue coming around. We're going to see Lings continue to take a lot more damage, and yeah, I guess these Queens are going to continue trying to fight as well. And we're going to be seeing the uh, Queens just continue being picked off. Spine Crawler going to be finishing here in a moment. I guess in the end he's going to clean it up, but it's been an okay fight for Keen. I mean, he's done enough. And he's cleaned out a lot of his elegance. He's forced a Spine Crawler, you know, he forced the Queens to come out. I think he's done enough to kind of set up nicely, liberate a follow up as well, but maybe do just a little bit more damage. And uh, just sort of goes from there. Cool stuff. We see a mule going down, and we're going to be seeing Keen just setting up into this. We're going to see an Overlord moving around the top side as well. A single marine just moving through the center. And he's going to be seeing Rogue and a few Zerglings looking to see what is up. Libra. Going to fall back and get repaired up, I guess. Just going to be looking to see uh, what's going on as we see the Overlord continue to come on in here. A little bit of a drop in Overlord. We're all getting set up and ready to go into this right now, so we're going to look to see what he can do in the next few moments. So, uh, yeah, I mean, SCV's just repairing up this library. We're going to be seeing a couple of refineries finishing up on the natural expansion. Two engineering bays are going to be uh, starting here as well. So a couple of engineering bays on the way right now. And as we going to be seeing the lair is uh, starting to build on up here. So, lair starts. Alien's just taking the center of the map and... Yeah, it's a weird kind of composition. Like, he's got, like, a couple of Cyclones, Hellbats, and a couple of Libs. Like, I don't even really know what to make of this push that we see right now out of the Terran player. Like, it's very, very strange. Very interesting. You see the Cyclones starting to work their way through this, and we're going to be seeing... Well, these Queens taking a little bit more damage as well. 
And we're going to be seeing the Zergums coming around, wrapping around the Cyclones, a little bit of damage being done. And honestly, I mean, this third base might just be in trouble. Splits away from a few Banes, but there's only three of them. And these Cyclones are still whacking out crazy damage towards these Queens, and they're both still alive here towards the end. Lings are going down as well, and Rogue is in a lot of trouble. Bane Drop does come in, kills off a few SCVs, but not too many. I mean, Keen's uh, economy is still pretty good here, 45 to 55 workers. And he's about to kill this third base as well, and that is going to put our Zerg into a really tough position to recover from. Libre is still up in the sky, seeing what he can add on to this. I mean, eventually everything else will go down, this Libre even will get shot, but... You know, all said and done. The medevac is, uh, you know, all said and done. It's a cleanup from Rogue. But losing the third hatchery is really just painful. Because that puts the Zerg, you know, the Zerg so far behind where he should be. That's so much mining he's going to be missing out on. All of these drones long distance mining. Hugely negative effect to him in this game right now. As we're going to be seeing a couple of medevacs coming out towards the third base. And plus one, plus one. Continue coming from Keen as well. About halfway done on those upgrades. Plus one melee starts from uh, Rogue as well right now. A few more zones just coming out of the main, of the natural. I'm going to start heading across the map. And a couple more creep teams continue to spread out here. Look to see what else they can get done as we're going to be seeing the combat shield upgrade. And it's about halfway done. Sorry, not halfway done, it's just started. Combat shield upgrade is just starting on up as we see the spire finishing up from Rogue very shortly too. I mean, with the spire, maybe the middle is our way for Rogue to kind of claw his way back a bit without the third base. He doesn't even have that much gas. He's going to be able to make, what, like three Mutalists here right away? Well, that's not really going to be all that many, so not going to be a great start as we see these Banes. Just going to start morphing in. And I see the uh, plus one, plus one vehicle plating as well, and the combat shields all starting up. Marines, how about the Widowmine? Pushing forward as a free platoon as will be scanned down, and well, let's see what King can do with this. First kind of larger push, I guess, now that kind of... You know, his stim pack's done, one more is done as well. It's his first kind of main army that's moving onto the map here. And we're going to be seeing these uh, Banes finishing morphing. And, uh, I love that the Hellbats in the front will look to soak and at least take down some of these Banes before they get to the Marines. I mean, it's just not going to be very much here for Rogue at all. Like, what has he got? He's on 16 army supply? Oh my god, 16 army supply against 55. He's got one Ling on the map right there. He had one Zergling on the map for a moment. That's all he had in army, apart from the Queens. Uh, I mean, bro, I mean, Keen just has to reinforce. He's going to force the GG. It's going to be GG right there. And Keen is going to pick up. Coming your way. As we uh, set on up to the bottom side of Newkirk Precinct, of course. As we get into map number three. Let's see what's going to happen. It's going to be a yellow Zerg to the bottom left-hand side. It is Rogue. And down to the bottom right, our blue Terran player. It's going to be Keen. So I'm looking to see what's going to happen. Keen has been playing very well lately. I think he's probably... Him and Alive. I don't know what it is. I just... I mean, him and Alive have been playing these online cups for a long time. Like, go for SE2, etc. And I always just look at them as these players who... I just... You know, because they play go for SE2 and stuff, like... I guess we never really saw them play against the very best. And he just didn't realize how good these guys are because... Keen's been playing so well lately. Doing well in GSL, a lot of online cups, you know, a lot of these Korean based events as well. He's been doing a really good job. And he's just been doing, he's been very impressive in my eyes, like a way higher level than I really thought Keen was at. I was going to be seeing these couple of Marines. Just going to sit on the ramp, going to see the factory, is going to be uh, moving around. I'm just going to swap onto the reactor once again. Again, a factory based opening here. Keen just staying away from the 2 1 1s. I do think that, uh, actually, Keen is uh, a big 2-1-1 user. I feel as though he might just be looking to utilize an advantage over Roki or something. Like, I feel as though he might just be looking to try and uh, set up to kind of, like, get into Rogue's mind a little bit and bits and pieces like that, you know? So, uh, yeah, see what's going to happen. See uh, how this game will continue on over the next few moments. So, first Hellion's coming out. As we do see the stim pack starting up as well from Keen, and again a couple of Hellions just continuing to uh, come out here over the next few moments. Patrick coming down on the third base, and we're going to be seeing the command center building on the third base as well. 
Just a single gas, so it's going to be a bit of a different kind of opening this time. But again, I mean, you think of kind of Rogue's position. He's seen two Hellion openings used aggressively in a row. He sees a third one now. You know, if he doesn't scout this lack of second gas, which he hasn't done yet. Oh, he's seen the third CC, though. Okay, well, that's pretty huge. I mean, that's why you invest in a pneumatized carapace, to figure out what's going on in these sort of situations. You see these couple of Hellions continue to set on up here. Keen moving around. I see the army on the way down on the low ground as well. And you see this third hatch just over halfway done. So third hatch halfway built. And we've seen these couple of Evo chambers coming in as well. And Rogue just uh, setting up into this. So really just nice standard stuff from Rogue. And I mean for the most part standard stuff from Keen as well. I mean Rogue will know he can play greedy. He knows he doesn't really need many units for a while. And uh... Yeah, just going to be seeing these few Hellions continue to move around. Just take some map control, try and maybe deny a bit of creep here and there if possible. Just look to see what they might be able to... Uh... Let's look to see what might be happening. Going to see some creep spreading on out. Plus one, plus one continue to come in here from Rogue. And just going to be seeing these Hellions. I mean, there's a lot of Hellions. I mean, usually when you see a kind of a 3cc build, it's two to four Hellions to keep yourself safe. This is a heck of a lot of Hellions. Moving through this south side. Picks off a creep team and morphs into Hellbats. Big Hellbat attack and well, how prepared is Rogue? Honestly, I don't think he's very prepared at all. I don't think he's expecting a Hellbat attack. I think he's just being greedy. It's a bit of a meta game play here by Keen. He just says, well, you know, you expect me to be greedy and expect the free CC. Well, yeah, I'm being greedy, but you better make sure you don't kind of skimp on too many units because I've also got a whole bunch of Hellbats that are going to run your way and it's going to start ruining your day. Drones are staying alive for now. And the thing is, there's only Zerglings, and Zerglings will struggle so much to get rid of these Hellbats. You can get rid of a few Queens already, that's nice. I mean, the drones kind of stay in array for now from these Hellbats, which is good. He hasn't lost too many just yet. Starting to lose a few now as he goes back towards the Mineral Line. That one Hellbat just working away in whatever it can find. And again, more so than anything else here, Keen is just picking up Queen kills, but also picking up, uh... Well, picking up Queen kills, picking up uh, Drone kills, picking up Link kills. Just trading out with everything and forcing a lot of units rather than drones being produced. You see Bina Nest is uh, on the way down for Rogue in the natural expansion. You can see a few of these Zergons start to move out into the center of the map. So, so I'll move out into the center of the map. And going to be taking down a SCV or two here as well. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, Bina Nest continue to come on up. Halfway done, we're going to see 1-1 one, one finishing very shortly. I'm just going to be seeing Rogue. Still setting up very nicely so far in this game. Combat shields continue to come on in, and again, just looking to see what else is happening. So, Bitness finishes up, plus two Carapace starts, and we're going to be seeing 10 drones on the way out. Combat shields will finish very, very soon. And uh, with that finishing, I mean, does Rogue. Oh, does Rogue have something to worry about, I guess? Well, no, maybe. Keen's got a bit of an army here, but he doesn't really have medivacs or anything just yet. They're about to pop. I don't know if he's really going to attack them. Maybe, I guess he'll start dropping a bit. But at the same time, I mean, Rogue is up on 67 workers himself. I mean, Rogue is at this point in the game where he should also be looking towards kind of making a few units too. Because he doesn't need that many more drones, you know? Single Marine here will take down maybe one Zergling before it falls. No, not quite. Again, just a little bit of a battle for uh, map control at this point in the game. I'm just going to be seeing these couple of Zerglings. Moving around the top side from Rogue, this Overlord going to back away as well. Marines and these two Medivacs are going to be moving through the center. So they're going to move through the center to look to see what else is up. Centrifugal Hooks just over halfway done. I'm going to be seeing the Spire on the way down as well. A few more Banes just going to finish morphing in. And again, more Marines, more Medivacs just joining up. And uh, yeah, I guess this Overlord going to get taken down. So Overlord gets taken down. And still just Keen kind of holding some map control here in the early stages and just poking and prodding. I mean, obviously with the kind of passive opening, I say passive, he had a lot of Hellions on the map, but without the Medivacs and Sim and so on until like now, it means that he couldn't really take too much kind of creep tumors down. He couldn't really take too much of a presence on the map. I mean, the Hellions do a lot, but it's kind of surprising when they're just Hellions, you know, how, how little they can do against the Queens. I mean, obviously when they're moving the Hellbats, they can fight, but then they're not really taking map control. They're just attacking into the natural, so... It's kind of interesting. I mean, he does slow down. Oh, looks like some SCVs went down over here. He does slow down the creep by kind of uh, attacking the Hellions. Oh, no! Oh, it's disgusting. It's a massacre. 
Keen, despite those Bayonet hits, is actually still ahead in supply. Um, because he was very far ahead, actually, coming out of the Hellbat attack. And, well, he's dropping in the main base as well right now. And he's going to keep on pushing. Man, just not paying attention for a moment there. And those Bayonet did so, so much. Continue to push forwards. We're going to see this Widowmine going off in a moment or two. Actually splashes onto the Marines. Now they're low on health. Reinforcements arrive, though. And Keen's still ahead on supply, pushing forwards. 90 army to 52. We're going to see both players on at the plus two, plus two upgrades as well. So they're not going to be really much of a factor in this game right now, being even. Neither player will take an advantage from it. Widowmines, well, they're going to be the kind of initial buffer to these Balins. As here we go. Uh, being starting to connect in the back. A few more finishing up. And I think Keen just might have a bit too much here. Again, an early lead for Keen really is developing. And as I see these Lings, Banes, and Mutalisks from Rogue continue to move around. Marines and a couple of Marauders looking to see where else they can go. And just maybe seeing these Mutalisks. We're going to see what else is happening. Banes continue to roll on in. And just maybe seeing these uh, Banes continue to go in a few different directions. The Zerglings moving forward is going to be, uh, again, picking off another Marauder or so. Marauders Marines still working their way through this Bane and Nest, so Bane and Nest will go down. I'm just going to be seeing these, uh, again, Marines and Marauders continue to set on up here. Setting out the front and still just looking to maybe keep on pushing forwards. We're going to see a couple of Banes continue to roll on through, and well, Keen just splitting backwards once again here on New Kirk Precinct. He is not letting up this pressure, just pushing all the way into the natural expansion even. I mean... He's not lit up at all. He's killed the Bane Nest now, of course, which means there's no more Banelings. And that's a pretty big deal, because it means without Banelings coming in, there's only Lings and Muters, and guess what? They don't trade too well against these continuous reinforcements of Bio. All but two Muters are gone, and now just one left in the sky. It goes down as well. It's only drones here left to defend, as I say that. A few more of these Zerglings come on in. And look to see what else they can get up to. That's going to be GG, though. Keen takes game three. And he is going to take the lead in this series now. Very, very long one. But, let's see if it's going to be the end or whether our yellow Zerg player will bounce back a little bit and get something done. It's Rogue, who could take us to a game number five. And to the upper right hand side, the blue Terran player. It is Keen. He's going to be looking to see what he can get up to as well here, even in the next few moments. Again, gas pool from Rogue. He's been playing this every single game so far. I mean, obviously, there's this factor that it is just kind of the safe way to go. I mean, it, I mean, it is. It's a very safe way to go about things. So, safe way to open. And that's how he's going to be setting up here initially. As we have the uh, pool, just continue to build up. Going to be about half we're done in just a few moments' time. And a drone just going to come down to the natural to build up that hatchery as well. So, setting up. Nothing too crazy there just yet. As we uh, do you see the uh, barracks just about to finish up in the main. I mean, Rax gas goes into Reaper. This might very well be a non-factory follow-up. This might be the first time we see Keen opting for that 2-1-1 uh, build order. As he moves out to scout for an SCV, wants to see if it's a pool first again, wants to know if he should send his Reaper across the map or not. Mm, again, this definitely does could uh, does look to be a potential 2-1-1. I mean, any sort of Rax gas build is more likely to be uh, 211 than uh, Rax Factory. Just because of the fact that Rax Factory just builds so nicely off of gas racks that it makes a lot more sense to go for gas racks if that's what you're going to go for. So, Factory is uh, not going to be coming down. It is the barracks. There's a reactor. Second deep pro as well. I'm going to see this 211 push. So, a little bit of a difference here from Keen. Changing things up for himself a little bit right now. As we do see this uh, SCV coming in towards the. Well, coming through the top side of the map. And we're going to be seeing Pommy just writing some Russian on the screen as well. See what's up. And again, this command side is just going to be continue to build in the natural expansion. So CC continue to build here. And we've seen that factory from Keen. Obviously finishing. We know this build from Keen. There's not really anything we need to uh, see with that. So it's going to be seeing that uh, Zerg player. Once again, building up new entire characters. Very similar to the previous games. Very similar to the previous games. 
And this is going to be seen the uh, Queen again just spreading out a little bit here now. Is Zergling going to move through the south side of the map? And Rogue just having a little bit of a look to see what he can get up to. So Rogue moving around. You can see what's happening. It's going to be seen here. Uh, we'll drop him down on the natural expansion. So we'll drop him down on the natural. Going to be seen Stimpak on the way. And again, Keen just going to drop down the reactor too. So. So yeah, just uh, getting this going and getting this ready to rumble. <sighs> I said that a lot lately. I don't know what's got maybe saying here. Getting ready to rumble. I've said that so much in my cast the last couple of days. So much. I really don't know why. It's one of those things I've just said once and obviously I've liked it. It's stuck in my mind. And so I keep coming back to it again and again and again. It's kind of, uh, kind of weird, isn't it, what gets stuck in your mind. It's one of the things that I've actually found really amazing uh, while I've been casting. The kind of different ways in which you, uh, the different ways in which you can kind of learn to speak, I guess, and different ways in which you can, like, words come to your mind as well, I suppose. I shouldn't get too deep on a topic right now, I'm pretty fucking tired, so. <laughs> if I start talking nonsense, it's gonna really be nonsense for once. Armory on the way here from Keen, so what he's gonna be doing is actually a bit of a different variant to this 2 one, one. He's actually going to be going for a big Hellbat based attack, so it's kind of a bit more of an all-in variant. Um, he's going to be building Hellions here early, and it's going to be a very powerful push where he still has like the two Medivacs initially, but then the follow-up attack is going to be with a lot of Hellbats, and uh, you, you know you better make sure you've got a bin and nest ready. That's as much as I can say. It's a very powerful attack. I mean, you can catch players off guard because they defend the initial drop, and they think, oh cool, two one one defended, drone, 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 drone. But in reality. You need to be making more and more units because the follow-up is just so powerful. Combat shield starts up here as well now as we're going to be seeing. The units dropping through the top side. And you're seeing these units continue to move on over to the left. So Marines just getting ready to keep pushing forwards. And you're going to see a couple of uh, creep tumors getting taken down by this scan. Another creep tumor going down as well. And Marines will start a fight. I mean, here the Hellbats, they actually just came across the map. So he's just going to fight this. And... Uh, Queen's starting him down one medevac, but he's going to win the fight against the Lings on the ground. And now he's talking down higher health, uh, higher energy Queens. Transfusers are not happening right here. Keeps this medevac alive as well. Two more Hellbats joining the fray. Reaper Grenade blasts the Queens around as well. And two more Marines teaming across, seeing what else they can do. Uh, he can get done here. Lots of Queens taken down. He'll get cleaned up, but I, it's, it's nice. It's cool. for the. Uh, it's kind of actually interesting, I guess. Because... This is the first time Keen's gone for 2 one, one and yet when he goes for it, he doesn't go for the standard version. He goes for the very weird, interesting version, which is a little bit off-tilt, you know, off-canter. It's a little bit different. So it's very interesting, as we're going to be seeing this uh, group of segments still moving around. Blair is on the way up here from uh, our Zerg player then behind this. And he's signed up into a second Evo Chamber, so the plus one melee on the first Evo Chamber right now. Link coming up this round, doing a little bit of nibbling onto this uh, supply depot. These two medivacs are going to be starting to head out onto the map. Look to see where they can go. So these two medivacs are going to come through the top side and look to see what they can get up to in the next couple of moments. And we've seen the uh, units going to drop to the side of this base and yeah, looking to see what they can get up to, just looking to see what they can do. Nothing too crazy though. And this spore color position and push them away as. Zergling on the watchtower gets taken down, and Marines Marauders, or Marines and Hellbats will get lifted up once again here. And a few Lings and Queens gathering up together, fourth base down to the bottom left-hand side, being taken established as well over the next few moments. And yeah, and these Medivacs is flying around, a few Marines and Hellbats begin to unload, and again, looking to see what they can get up to. I mean, cleaning some creep would be a nice little job for them to do. So he yeah, has one or two creep teamers here, starts to back away, will fight. I mean, the Hellbats still do a lot of splash to those Lings. It's kind of crazy how much Hellbats do. You kind of forget, so. Si. The other thing is, though, they do go down very quickly, and they kind of do damage in a really awkward way with the way they kind of splash around in a arc. Oh. It's, uh, it's interesting. Lack of mobility is the real issue with Hellbats when you go up against kind of Ling Bane Muta. And obviously, they don't shoot up as well, so compared to mines, they don't necessarily help against the Mutas as well. Which is why, I mean, you see them sometimes. Sometimes people incorporate them as their mid-game composition rather than mines, but it's a kind of a rare thing to do. It's something you do when you want to change things up a bit from the norm. Because you do have to engage into it in a slightly different way and so on. And 
And, you know, maybe just changes the pacing of the game slightly, but generally Wooden Mines are considered the better option. Obviously, for kind of earlier attacks like what Keen went for here, Hellbots are a great option. I mean, they come out quickly, they do a lot of damage when it comes in down to lower numbers of units. It's just the large numbers of them they kind of uh, don't do so well in, I guess. Maybe seeing the uh, units continue to stim on forwards. Going to get rid of a couple more of these creep tumors here and continue to push on through. Again, just going to load up, actually going to make a drop in towards the main base, so... A little bit of action. This is kind of exciting. Seeing the drop up here. I guess he both of the red mines on the ramp, which makes life difficult for Rogue in terms of engaging into this position. As, uh, here we go. Well, first red mine shots don't go off just yet. As I mean, more Marines doing their job so far, pulling away from those banes. A couple of them connecting though. And we're going to be seeing. I think in a moment or two, it'll be time to lift and back away. And there it is. One medevac will get taken down by these queens. No, just manages to get away. And as they change target at the last moment, there. Liberator sieged up. In a very annoying position where I will deny a little bit of the mining. It is on the way though, so it's going to get cleaned up in a moment or two, but Keen's already in a supply lead as he continues to push on over to the left-hand side of the map here. So, continue to push on over to the left-hand side. You're going to be seeing a couple of creep tumors. going to start getting taken down as well. And you're going to be seeing this uh, push from the Terran. I'm going to see what else might keep on happening as we see. Another scan coming down. Bane's are about to finish up, and you know, Lings and Bane's continue to crash on fours. Let's see what happens as... Oh, they're going to keep on crashing in. Actually, it's a nice cleanup from uh, uh, from Rogue here initially. Keen's still pushing forwards, though. A couple more uh, Marines coming in, joined up. Nice little lift to get away from the majority of those Banes. Now dropping back down to just soak up the Banes one at a time. Medivac's out on their own. We'll have to boost back as Mutilus begin to chase. But more reinforcements arrive, so I mean, Keen just keeps on pushing. And still up 20 supply. And that's just in overall supply. I mean, he's actually up even further in army supply because he's down a little bit on workers. Widermine's Boron here. That's going to be disgusting. Widermine shots onto the Mutas. Splashes to the Zerglings. These Bane's going to get targeted down nice and quickly. One more to get rid of. Doesn't get targeted down just yet, so we'll still stay at large. And Keen just getting more and more momentum. It seems pushing forwards now in towards the third base. And this is starting to go the same way as it did on Nuker Precinct. But Keen's just in a position where he can push forwards. He just keeps on doing so much damage. He just seems to get further ahead every single time. Lings and Mutas fighting in, but where are the Banelings? Where on earth are the Banelings, like, non-existent? GG. Rogue just taps on out just like that. He will qualify himself for Stage 2. 